It looks like I'm gonna have an extra packet if you want it to read along with the budget. <laughs> Uh, you might as well, huh? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to try not to go over. We got a lot to go over. Ready for me to get started. Okay, well, if everybody's ready, I'll just dive right in. I think everybody here has got a packet. This is our first of two budget hearings for our 2022 budget. Um, by law, we are required to hold two of these prior to the board approving the budget, which is due to the State Department September 15th. Um, so, and it has to be, there has to be a quorum of the board members, which we do have, and at a meeting. So. The first, I've, I've color-coded the sheet so you can follow along a little easier with me. The first section of it is just the white stapled sheets and it is just the, the preface, mission statement, introduction to the budget, and glossary of terms. And I, and I attached the Alabama Code, the 1613-40, that explains the requirements for the budget. Um, and I won't go over these because it's, I mean, it's just self-explanatory. The first section that I'll start is on um, general information, which is our staff information. It's the blue sheet, and then we've broken it down by schools and by certified support and total employees at each school. Um, Abbeville Elementary, Abbeville High School, the HCBC, Headland Elementary, Middle and High School. And we've got the central office staff, the rear tech coach, bus shop staff, maintenance, school nurses. Then we have our bus drivers, one utility worker, and then it brings the total FTEs of 331. Anybody have any questions? Give you a minute, Miss Jean. Let you get it's the legal it's the legal folder. So it's, yes. Ma'am. Okay. So the next section will be our salary schedule. That's the lavender copy sheets, and this does include the two percent raise that'll be in effect come October first. We've added the team salary schedule to this for our teams, teachers. Um, the revision that was made with the central office supervisors is included in here that the board just recently approved. <clears throat> so this will include all positions for the system and that's with the 2% raise. And I'm thinking the board will vote on this September, is that right? You have it. And also just to the back of that one, I did include the state minimum salary schedule, which we, we go by that. Now the next part is where we get into how we earn our money, and that's our the yellow section, the supplemental report. And the first page of that is gonna be our system totals. If you'll notice at the beginning, the ADMs is 2399.95, and that is that is how we earn our teacher units for each school. <clears throat> I 
our classroom instructional support money this year is $700 per unit per certified personnel. Technology is $500. Library enhancement is $157.72 each. Professional development is $100 each. And textbooks $75 per ADM, which would be per student. Did this unit go, um, go up from last year? The teacher materials did. It went up from $600. Um, and if you'll see there, the total state allocation foundation program, which is where we earn our teacher units, that earned us $14,073,226. And that's for all of our certified staff. And then below that section, it breaks down the school nurse allocation, technology coordinator, and at risk. And the projected enrollment, I got this number. This was as of August 27th. The enrollment for the system is 2,396. So we're pretty steady on enrollment. It's down three from the ADM. The last section there for the system is source of funds, which is how we're funding these units. Break, broke out by teacher, librarians, counselors, administrators, and it's um, total employees, 331. And then I break it out by state, federal, other state. And local. Do you have the enrollment at individual high school? Um, it is. It's on these sheets following the system total. So the next one behind that is Abbeville Elementary. That's, I've got them over that way. So Abbeville Elementary's ADM was 355.15 and they earned a total of $1,903,544. Dollars, and that does include their their um, classroom instructional support. And their enrollment, August 27th, was 345. And they have 53 staff. Do you have what it was last year at the Abbey Elementary? Mm, not in this, I don't. But I can do that. I can make a note and do that at the next post. Can you do a comparison of the two? Yeah, it was 51. I don't remember that at all. But I will. I can do that. Um, Abbeville High School, grade 7 through 12. Their ADM is 320. And their enrollment is 318. And their total staff is 41. will be Kevin Elementary and that's pre-K through five. Their ADM was 746.4 and their enrollment's actually up to 776. And that earned them $3,877,173. 81 and a half personnel. Kevin <coughs> Middle School's next. Their ADM, 577.45. And their projected enrollment, 575. And total employees, 48 and a half. And also, about middle ways of this page, if you'll notice total units, the 34.29 on each one of these, that, that is how many units they earn based on that 80 units. Well, and that's on every one of these sheets. So, um, Headland High School is the last school listed. And their ADM is 400.95, earned a total units of 25.83, and foundation dollars, $2,087,302, with a projected enrollment of 382 and 42 staff. So 10 through 20 with Kelly Master with 575, or that 9 through 20? No, no, I'm wrong. I'm Three. sorry. It, it's all of them. It's the 9 through 12. That's their entire enrollment. For, so they're actually for high down school? about 18. For high school? For the high school. No, it's 10 through 12. Okay. Because they're not first time. Okay. 
Did I put the nut on the middle? No, you I got it. Right. Yeah. So, so that is it. The foul was the seven five schools, the Hill High School, from 10 down to 20. No, they've got 382. They're down about 18. They're the last sheet. Have a middle school has 575. Yeah, middle. Yeah. And they actually earned Foundation 25.83 teacher units. And that's all for the supplemental. And what it, what it is, I totaled the system. I added all the schools up to the cover sheet. Um, the next thing I'll go over is our long-term debt, and I won't get into that one too deep, but I did build a spreadsheet of all of our debt that we have and explain what the projects were over the years, and they go back all the way to 2010 to present. Um, all the bonds that we've refinanced, so the total payments that we'll have to make in 22 is $1,308,784.27. And if you look at the left corner, I broke it out by fund source. So we do get state monies. The PSF capital outlay monies is going to pay $738,000. Local has to pick up $514,000. And then state bond money is $55,000. Seven hundred thirty-eight thousand. So it's. I was achieving a percentage. Some schools got a lot of and got an increase in what they did. Some schools had like thirty-eight percent. They went up forty-two percent. Mm -hmm. I was just keeping up with the percentage. Have we allowed to change that figure, or have we? From it's just the state allocates it. It's based off of their calculation off of our ADM report based off our students. But it's actually up 30000 from last year. So I'm just saying some schools are allowing for more. Mm -hmm. I just want to read it to them allowing for more. They're not allowing for more. We, they give that to us like they do the foundation. They base it off of how many teacher units we are, students we have. The uh, the lights at Apple High School. I did add those. Yeah. <coughs> that uh, there's an outside source paying that back to us each. I year. have not been able to get that in writing, but yes, sir. Last year, you know, we we the last contact I had was he would be making annual payments. Has he made? When will he make that? No, and I haven't. I haven't been able to get back in touch with him. So I'll have to get back on that. You know, it was like we spread it out over the five-year period that we decided to do the payments. But I've not been able to get an agreement on that one. But I thought this was good information because it, it shows how much of our local that we have to pick up on our debt. So we're pretty tapped out on our long-term debts and bonds for a while. And the first one that will actually come, that will be paid, will be the, the Snyder. It started in 2010, and it was for 15 years. So that one will be paid for that equipment. Um, the next thing is actually budget, the, the proposed budget with our projected expenditures and revenues, the hot pink cover sheet. This is where all this paperwork I key it in and this is where it generates it on these reports. So, and the beginning balances could change based off of how we end the year. Right now we're running pretty good. I'm, I was conservative with the beginning balances. So we just hope it, have, it ends better than what I'm projecting because I, I was very conservative. But the beginning balance for our general fund, two million two hundred thousand, and it goes down all the way across to our special revenue, which is our school monies, um, federal programs, special ed, the capital projects fund, and fiduciary would be the schools non-public, which would be their boosters and their clubs. 
the first section, it goes over the revenues. State revenues would be the first. The, one, the money that I just went over on the yellow sheets for the staff that we are, state revenues, the $14,815,712. The SDE appropriations, that's going to be our um, nurse fund, ARI, and tech coordinator. Then you have the transportation fund at risk. And then we have state preschool, and we have a JAG program, that's at Henlon High School. Um, OSR Pre-K program, that's a state funding program, and that's at Abbeville Elementary and Hedlin Elementary. Um, state contracts is actually our High Hopes grant that we've recently been awarded. And then if you look over at the debt service column, the 721000 that's the allocation from the state, the PSF that we use on our long-term debt. The next page, PIV, it just continues the revenues. Um, the total state revenues, $17,248,957 in our general. If you go all the way over to the right, to the total, grand total all funds, $18,175,471. And then the next section is going to be our federal revenues, which would be our um, $3,200, $3,299 is, is special ed. And then 3300 range is our career tech programs. And Title I is $822,551. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Title I. Mm -hmm. Do you separate them in with you, sir? Or do you just pull them all together? Because we got 9% of one school, 97% of the other school. Uh, no one about three that. months ago, I asked for a report as to how it was spent individually, mm -hmm. and I never did. So I want to know. <clears throat> uh, you, don't, you don't know what happened. Well, school. now the the sheet that I gave y'all the last work session. It went out. It didn't teachers. break it down. I was I've been trying to get the report. Mm -hmm. I broke broke down. You don't know what 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 each individual one is. Mm -hmm. Because we have to give them allocations based off of their free and reduced from the low it. poverty numbers. And it, right, it's in rank order. So Abbeville Elementary is the highest. I'm saying, I just want to report it to how much money it was yeah. and how it was spent. Okay. Well, I mean, it's pretty I'm simple. Not, it, was on, it was on teachers. Well, I'm saying, pretty I'm much in 21. I, I would like, for three months ago, I asked for this report. Mm -hmm. Now I'm asking for it again. I would like to know. How was the Tower One for spent for each mm -hmm. school? <clears throat> I don't know about who and I don't know. I want to know mm -hmm. how much was spent at each school. Okay, I could give you their allocation. It's simple because they use it for teachers or aides and then parent involvement materials. Mm -hmm. well, I want to see it on paper mm -hmm. as to where every dollar went because I don't feel like Tower One for <coughs> as a high mm -hmm. school. Now tell me this. If one school is 90% and another school is 97%, who would get the most of those funds? The 97%. Okay. It tell writes, me, but it's based it off the number of students. Abbeville Elementary, yeah. Abbeville High School, <coughs> Hamlin Elementary, yeah. and Hamlin I know what I'm saying. Okay. I need to know what each school, because the poverty rates are different, so each school is given a different amount. Mm -hmm. But when you pull it together, that's where, that's where the, you know, the balance is messed up. We are pulling it. We don't pull it together. You are pulling it. You say the one that's something. At the end of the year, if there's something left, you do a pool. If there's any carried over, then we have to carry it over. Then it's reallocated the next year. But I'm saying, based is on it, the same you told me it was put in a pool. Is it being put in a pool? Like from the central office pulled into no, all schools? No. no. You told me that if there was some left, we put it all in a pool and allocate it out. It's reallocated the next year, but we do it based off the same now, criteria to the schools. I'm saying we, we, we didn't have any Title I funds left over for the next Not year. Not in 2020. <clears throat> I'm saying with, with the poverty rate at Elman High School, Elman Elementary School, why don't we got any left over? Well, and they didn't in 2020, they... and I don't see them having it in 21 because they paid staff with it. And they do use it for the parent involvement. They spend all of that money. 
For what? Parent involvement. Parent involvement? What's that? Like material that they have to buy, make copies, send packets home to parents, and the paper, their ink, different things like that. Uh, if I've got it correct, the entire award is an additional amount given to poverty schools to try to balance it out where they don't have the funds to do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. It's not a supplement for others. It's, it's, it's a, it's a uh, well, it's a supplement given to try to balance it out. To, right. mm -hmm. So I, that's why I wanted to know where per dollars, how do we spend it? And I asked this three months ago. I want to know how was it spent? Where did it go? And it went to teachers and instructional. Do you, I mean, when did I, I ask you to give me a report did. as to how much was spent in every direction? Is that simple enough? I mean, I don't know what else to say. Well, the last work session I gave, a, it was on a no. word, and it was answer, no. all the answer money, no. title one, two. Did, it was did not, it did not give a description. It did not ask you as to how the money was spent and where was it spent. I just want to know, Miss Andrews, if, I don't know how complicated it is. Well, how, tell me how was it spent? How much was spent for teachers? How much was spent to the students? Because my understanding, I'm not happy with the way it's spent at high school. Kids are not really we getting it. We go off of a needs I just, I, I got I got a right to, to think my own thing. I don't think the kids are getting their children. They're not getting to the kids. We do it based off of a needs assessment, which is well, based see. off of the federal they programs. They they needed teachers. So they and they it's a see. checks and balance. We have to send it up, and it has to be reviewed by the State Department. And they either approve the application or they do not approve the application. And if they don't approve it, then they explain why. There Sorry. are many processes. So there's many checks and balances. Why don't, why, don't, why don't we do this? Yeah. Get Mr. Davis what he wants. Thank you. Get to do it. Do it very simply. Thank that, you. that this school got this amount of money and this is how it was spent. Thank you. Very and simple. then from that, whatever Thank other you. information, we can break it down from there. Thank you so much. That's all I'm asking. Put it on paper. Where did the money go? And just for Title One. Just Title One. And what was the other? What what else was it that you wanted me to do? Uh, I've been trying to get that about three months now. Okay. So moving now, along. Now, if it, now, just let me say this. If you, if you pool, if you had an additional amount left, and you pooled it, then you would never know each school got the appropriate amount or not. So but let me paid. know, let me know if at the end of the year there was some additional mm -hmm. money. Listen. I'm just saying, Tyler one has to be an additional amount to try to make up for what the kids don't have. Tutoring, all these other things. Abigail doesn't have any money for tutoring. They need money for tutoring. That should be an outstanding tutoring program. And Tyler one should come. But if you want to pool the money and send it where, where you got 50%, and they have 90%, 97%, 97% is a, is a terrible poverty figure. And that's what Abigail is. So now, I, that's why I want to see some dollars on the phone going to try to make up that that, that phone. But it's not. Well, email well now, the last report I looked on the state, they're like 83%. Abbeville Elementary. Well, last time I looked at that, and last time I looked at that, Abbeville Elementary is 97 Why don't we just email it yeah. to mm -hmm. you this yeah. week? That'd be great. I'll be trying to get it. Yeah, we'll we should go to everybody. We will. We'll send it. I will. Um, the next part of the federal, okay, we went over the special ed, and they do pay staff with theirs too. Um, career tech, we don't pay personnel there. That's just computer hardware and instructional materials. Um, title one. So then you flip the page to PIC. Then title title two. That's that's our professional development and training fund for. And we pay one class size reduction teacher. Title four would be our safe schools money, $60,753. And then the USDA, which is our CMP program, $1,290,000. The next page, the PID, totals our federal 
our federal revenues total two million nine hundred eighty six thousand eight hundred ninety five dollars. The last section of revenues is our local, and that's where our taxes come from, our ad valorem taxes. And we do have to put in um, the value of 10 meals in order to participate in the foundation program. And in 22, that amount is $1,696,140 of our local tax money. It has to be put back into foundation. And the same is true for the capital outlay fund, and that amount is $76,836. And that's the figures you're going to see here on this PID page. One meal's value here is around $169,000. The, la the last sheet of the revenues total all sources of revenues, all of our local. Um, food service income, which you'll see there's CMP, um, earnings on investments would be interest earned. But the grand total of our revenues, all sources, is $21,483,442 in our general fund. The last section on PIL is our expenditures. This is where we take it and break it out by our general revenue, our general fund, special revenues, and instructional services is where we pay our instructional staff, um, support such as our instructional aides, instructional support services would be our professional development, um, operations and maintenance, then you have auxiliary services which would be our transportation and CMP, general admin, then we have our capital outlay, the $1,308,000. That'll tie back to the green sheet, the debt sheet. Um, so total all uses for expenditures, $21,460,951.63 would bring us at a projected ending balance of $2,222,490.37. So pretty much through through the year, we'll maintain the balance we start with if we can stay on track. The next section of the printouts would be, it starts with PIA, and it breaks it down by cost centers. It's all the same information that was on the, on the PI exhibits, but by school. So you can see where the money goes with instruction, as far as general, special revenue, and the different areas of expenditures where it's where it goes. Um, and it goes through all of the cost centers. Every school, um, transportation, debt service. And I won't go through those pages, but that's just, that's the previous broken down by school and expenditure. That's all I have. Uh, in the back of the packets is a sheet that's the response <coughs> to review. Anybody has any Anything you want to add, change? I have a question back on the long-term debt. Mm -hmm. uh, the original amount, the first two, the three million dollars, uh, and then the nine hundred six thousand. Uh, that's the original amount. What is that? So the, we're saying that the balance of that of those two bond issues will be paid off the first one in 2020, well, both of them in 2025. Those payments mm -hmm. will go away. Maturity date, that's right. We're not gonna have to renew them or anything like that. That's so right. that's gonna free up uh, the pay total payment amount for those, 212,000. Mm -hmm. Is that worth it? Is that worth it? Is that worth it? No, sir, that it's uh, annual. Is it in that right? It yeah. is. It's yes. 50. Well, we actually pay the first one, the three million is annual, and then the other, the last one, the Snyder Electric, we pay it twice a year. Okay. But that's right, they'll both be paid up in 25. So in 25, we're going to be shed of those, mm -hmm. and then we'll be left with what we have down here. And the next one would be the one in 2033. Well, we'll be getting rid of this other one. Well, supposedly we're not going to have, we're not technically not paying the lighting. The lights, but I have my doubts as we're not going to be able to that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, 
theoretically, once these are paid off in 25, if we needed to do a little more borrowing, we could. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't hurt us that bad. Rates, rates are very low. And um, now's the time. I don't know what they'll be at 25. But. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because altogether, that's around 300000 Yeah. And we're paying 514 out of our general, so that's when we'll be saving. Sure we will. When is then? This may not be the right time to do it. When is uh, uh, Glenn and his group going to be finished with a review of all the fiscal plan? They should. What I'm understanding that this week we should be doing something. Can I have a question on the back on the yellow sheet with the pre five? When we're saying the uh, unit. They earned a half. A half. Okay. And then out here, it doesn't say that they have. So do we? Okay. That's going to be the state. Okay. The next is going to be the state. Okay. Earn a half. I thought they had the number to earn a full state. Yeah, because that should say 1.5 state earned. Okay. So it doesn't have the number still to earn a full state? That's based off of their enrollment. That's all they earned.
Commission Monday, August the 30th, 2021 at 5 o'clock p.m. at the Central Office in Abbeville. Uh, roll call that record showed that all of the board members are in attendance physically and none are by telephone. Uh, first item on the agenda, and we do have to, we cannot have any additions or deletions to this agenda since it is a special call meeting. So uh, keep that in mind, please. Uh, item one, recommend the board approve the written agenda. Motion by Mr. Watson. We have a second. Second by Ms. Wiggins. Any discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. It is unanimous. Item number two. Recommend the board approve the personnel recommendation attached here to its exhibit A and made a part hereof. Motion by Mr. Watson. We have a second. Yeah. Second by Ms. Wiggins. Any discussion? These are resignations, some of them even coming uh, on Friday. Any other questions, comments? All, right. All in favor, please raise your hand. The record shows that the vote is unanimous. Item number three, recommend the board approve the personnel recommendation attached here to exhibit B and made a part hereof. Good motion. Motion by Mr. Watson to have a second. Sure. Second by Mr. Davis. Any discussion? Okay, if you look at number one, uh, she does have a degree, and she would be taking uh, number one on the resignations list. Uh, she was the only one to apply for this position, and um, we would have to go the provisional route for her. On number two, she, uh, if you remember when Ms. Norwalk uh, was on uh, sixth grade, this is, would be that position. She is the only one that has applied uh, for that position also, and she'll be going provisional routes. Uh, number three. What, uh, what I asked for this was that she has done. Is she teaching there? What is she doing now? I'm trying to get the job. Um, she's doing long-term sub. So, mm -hmm. she, does she have a degree? Yes, they have to have a degree to go the provisional route. Uh, in fact, she's working on her master's. Number two is working on her master's degree. Um, number three would take the place of number one on the new hires. Number four, uh, if you remember when I talked about um, to help us out, like with that ESSER two money that we had, uh, we said that we were going to do some instructional aid positions, such as at the, ele the two elementary schools, to help to allow more time for the common planning. And so um, number, th number four would be um, one of those instructional aids and number five would be the other instructional aid for that. Number six is um, when Ms. Bauer, um, you know, she was the access um, aid, she would be taking her position. Number seven would be taking number three's position on the resignation. And then on number eight, we have had an influx of um, students in our self-contained resource room that require a lot of attention. Um, and it's almost one-to-one. -one. And so that's where that position, there is a need there for, for that. And you can, you know, individually, Vote. Any other questions or comments before we do that? What I'll do is I'll call your name and tell us how you vote one through eight. If there's no any more questions. All right, Ms. Wiggins? Yes, on Yes, on all. Mr. Davis? Yes, on all. Ms. Bush? Yes, on all. Mr. Watson? Yes, on all. I vote yes on all, so item three is. Item four, recommend the board approve the personnel recommendation attached here to as exhibit C and made a part hereof. Good motion. Motion by Mr. Watson. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Wiggins. Any discussion? Number one, when um, the coaching supplements were turned in, 
his name was left off, and so this would be um, adding him, and then number two, it was a revision there. So, uh, the first one is Happy Hill High School, and mm -hmm. then, I'm, I'm sorry, I was just doing his, and then number two was um, in Hedge Lane. We didn't uh, vote on the salaries of the coaches. Just put that out. I'll just want to bring it out in your. Uh, I thought we were going to discuss that at the work session, the discussion for what you had asked for the last time. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and vote on these salaries? He was left off. So we didn't vote on those salaries. We didn't vote on those. But the one that you questioned were the basketball yeah, supplement, not the point. football yeah. supplement. I mean, I have no problem with voting. I'm just saying we didn't vote on their salary, so it's okay. Well, the, I mean, that's what the salary is right. based off of. But we haven't voted on them. That's, that's, right. that's the point I'm Well, we were actually going to adjust. We actually did vote. Or you did. We voted but on it was, the coaches, there were going to be some adjustments. Not, we voted on the coaches, but not the amount they were going to be paid. Right. That's correct. So that's the question I was saying. I don't have a problem with the young man getting this about. I'm saying that we have not voted on the others. So he's getting his vote in first for his about. We can sign on him. But you know, we, you all voted because if you didn't vote at that time, then they would not have gotten their supplement starting in August. We voted for them as coaches. your hand. The record shows that the vote is unanimous on item four. Item five, recommend the board approve the first center recommendation attached here to as exhibit D and made a part hereof. Motion by Mr. Watson. We have a second. Second by Mr. Davis. Any discussion? These are um, stipends that should have been in June, and uh, they were left off, and they come straight out of, like number one, out of that senior sponsor, it comes out of that senior sponsor fund source, so it does not come out, and it's what they do in addition, like after school, and the same for number two, it comes out of that year. So, they come. so each school has their own fund source, or they have their fund, and that, these two are coming out of their fund source. Okay, so, okay. HHS mm -hmm. are these two. That's right. With AHS have. Okay. And so, he didn't, um, that was one that was not on there for this okay. year. Mm -hmm. okay. But if you see, he um, has requested it to be. For the year, mm -hmm. but not the same as one. That's right. Any other questions? All right, all in favor, please raise your hand. The record shows that item number five is unanimously approved. Item six, recommend the board approve um, Michael Estress's Crossing Guard Dental Elementary School. Move. Uh, Ms. Bush, did you make a motion? Ms. Bush makes a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Watson. Any discussion? Um, Dennis Cobb is going to step down from that post, and so he would be replacing um, Dennis in that position. All right, all in favor, please raise your hand. Oh, I'm sorry. And he is, he's with um, the Headland PD. And it comes out of general fund. All in favor, please raise your hand. Item number six is approved unanimously. Item number seven is that we are adjourned. That ends a special call. Okay. Now we'll move into our work session. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Why don't we take about a two minute break?
Thank you.